Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'll take you through the EAS halogenation reaction, focusing on the mechanism for chlorination and bromination. You can find my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution by visiting my website, LeiaForSci.com slash EAS. We'll start with a quick comparison of alkene halogenation to aromatic halogenation. If I add a halogen to an alkene in some inert solvent, I wind up with a vicinal dihalide, in this case 2,3-dibromobutane. However, if I try the same reaction with benzene, even though benzene has three pi bonds, we get absolutely no reaction, and that's because the halogen by itself is not a strong enough electrophile to make benzene break out of its aromaticity. I talk about this in great detail in the EAS intro video. And I also mentioned that you need a super electrophile, so let's see how this happens. In order to add a halogen to benzene, we have to use a Lewis acid, which is a strong catalyst that helps us create our super electrophile. You'll commonly see FeBr3 and AlCl3 as your Lewis acid, but there's one more difference. Instead of adding two halogens to the molecule, we actually replace just one hydrogen, adding a single halogen, in this case bromine, and we get a side product of HBr. Now let's see how the halogen interacts with the catalyst to make it a super electrophile for benzene to attack. Since bromination and chlorination follow the same mechanism, let's see what happens when we add Cl2 to benzene in the presence of AlCl3. The trick that you want to look out for, think of chlorine as greedy and it simply doesn't know when to give up. Let's take a look at the catalyst. We have AlCl3 where aluminum, as you should recall, is an exception to the octet rule in that it only needs three bonds or six electrons for a complete octet. But even though aluminum is happy, it still has that empty p orbital, and that means other atoms may not respect its exception to the octet rule and will find and attack that empty p orbital. Because this molecule is open to attack by a lone pair of electrons, this is considered a Lewis acid. The reaction begins when the chlorine that doesn't know when to give up uses a lone pair of electrons and attacks that empty p orbital binding itself to aluminum. The resulting intermediate is an aluminum with four bonds. If we do a quick formal charge using the trick of should minus has, should being the number of valence electrons in a neutral atom, has meaning directly attached to it, aluminum should have three, but directly attached to it we have four. 3 minus 4 gives me a formal charge of negative 1 on aluminum. We'll do the same thing for chlorine, specifically the chlorine that did the attack. Chlorine should have 7, but directly attached we have 6. 7 minus 6 gives me a formal charge of plus 1. The overall molecule is neutral because the plus and minus cancel out. But let's face it, halogens are highly electronegative and they really dislike positive charge. Remember I said this chlorine doesn't know when to give up. In order to compensate for this positive charge, the greedy chlorine grabs the bond that connects it to the other chlorine atom, completely breaking off that chlorine. The resulting structure still has a negative charge on the aluminum, but that green chlorine atom is now neutral. This component of the molecule is fine, but don't forget what else we created. In addition to the AlCl4 negative, we also have a free chlorine in solution with only six electrons. This is the super electrophile for two reasons. Reason number one, chlorine has an incomplete octet making it unstable. And reason number two, look at the formal charge. Chlorine should have seven electrons. It only has six. Seven minus six is positive one. Remember, halogens really dislike positive charge. And so if you take a halogen and give it a positive charge and an incomplete octet, it's so unhappy, so unstable, benzene has no choice but to attack. The reaction begins when benzene uses its pi bond to reach out and attack the positive chlorine, binding it to the ring. Now that chlorine is bound to the ring, it has a complete octet and it loses its formal charge. Don't forget we also have a hydrogen sitting on the same carbon atom, as well as a positive charge on the next carbon atom. If you're not fully comfortable with this mechanism, go back to EAS video 2 where I take you through the entire mechanism in detail. Remember that chlorine atom that didn't know when to give up? It finally figures out that it has to be useful. Chlorine will take the electrons that bind it to the AlCl3 catalyst, 
break away from the catalyst and instead form a bond to that hydrogen atom. Chlorine only wants the hydrogen nucleus, not the bonding electrons, and so when hydrogen is grabbed, these electrons will collapse towards that positive carbon, reforming the aromaticity. The final products include chlorobenzene, which has regenerated its aromaticity and therefore is very stable. We have HCl, and we've also regenerated the AlCl3 catalyst, allowing it to proceed and catalyze yet another reaction. You'll get the same mechanism if you react something like Br2 in the presence of FeBr3, since chlorine and bromine follow the same mechanism. Be sure to join me in the next video, where I take you through aromatic nitration, or you can catch the entire EAS video series on my website, layerforsci.com EAS. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.